Hey everybody, thanks for joining me this week. Have you ever noticed about the month of February, how it's kind of a teaser month? It's days like this, days like this that we're enjoying right now in the low 70s today, low 70s. And yet in a couple of days, winter will slam its ugly face right back into us and we'll be back in winter again. February, you're nothing but a tease. This week, I'm letting you in on a little bit of industry secret. At least an industry secret as far as professionals use, at least this professional, when it comes to starting a landscape project for a customer. And it all starts at the kitchen table, believe it or not. If you'd like to learn just a bit more on how to be successful with a landscape project, stick all the way through. Let's get this thing going, shall we? So maybe you've bought a uh, move up home. Maybe you've bought your uh, first brand new home. And that existing move up, maybe it's gonna need some renovation outside. Great home, but oh my God, the yard just will not work. And that brand new house with nothing in the backyard, well, heck, that's a blank canvas, but where in the hell do you start? Okay, that's what we're talking about here today. I'm gonna go through several things that I used to sit down with clients potential clients, and these would be the questions that I would ask. And they're very, very simple, and the answers you give will tend to steer you where you need to go, how much you need to spend, what things you have and don't have, and what you're gonna have to attain. And most importantly, answer the big question is, can you do it yourself, or at least most of it? Now believe me, as I stand here before you today, I understand. I really do. I understand that landscaping and a landscape project, it's not for everybody. There's a lot of people out there that just don't have it within them to take something like that on. And you know something? That's okay. And thank God for folks like that because that's how I made a living for a lot of years was people who just they had the resources, they wanted to use those resources and invest that money into their home by hiring a professional. But all us DIYers, and I'm part of your group, we all started somewhere. And we started uh, oftentimes with a trial and error. I know I did. You know, yeah, I had some college education here and there for designing an ornamental hort, but actually doing a landscape project Nah, the first couple of houses I had, that was all trial and error. And I really refined the process during that time. And that process is what I'm sharing with you here today. So let's get into it. The first thing I want you to do is I'd love for you to open up your computer or your phone and open up your notes app. And I'd really like you to start taking down the questions, taking down the questions, and then later on between you and your significant, if you have one, answering the questions separately and then get together get together in a neutral place and you will find out just how congruent you guys are you don't answer the other person's question and vice versa make sure that you just answer it and the other thing about this is brutal honesty it really is honesty not trying to appease the other Okay, because you can do your compromise later on. Right now, it's your thoughts and their thoughts. So with neighbors in my past, I have seen them do it. I've seen them walk out their front door and stand there on their walkway or in their driveway like this for 10, 15, 30, an hour, two hours, like this and going, huh. And you could see it. It's like, what should I do with this? We, what, what should I do? And I'm sure there's a lot of times where people have stood out on their decrepit back patio or at their slider door, and they're just like, wow, God, where, where do I start? This thing really needs attention. Where do I start? Okay, here's where you start right now. All right, you got that notes open? Here is step number one. Question number one, I want you to ask yourself whether it's a backyard or a front yard, which compass direction does it face in a majority of the day? North, south, east, or west? Pretty simple, right? It's because we're gonna start out simple. 
because it is going to determine exactly what you're going to be able to use and not use. You're certainly not going to put a uh, fragile Japanese fern on the southwest exposure in upper Texas. Okay, you get my drift? Okay, so answer that question. Number one, which direction is your landscape project going to be facing? Number two is a big leap. It's a big leap and you got, this one's gonna require probably more than one sentence, is what function is your new landscape going to perform for you? Function or functions? And let's get you on the wavelength of that. Function of entertainment, function of corralling animals, function of providing for kids play areas, function for putting a new shed back there because you got too much stuff to put in the garage, function for uh, uh, shade relief, function for the sound of water, functions. That's what I want you to tune in on, on question number two. Number three, what is my lifestyle? Not my lifestyle, your lifestyle. What is my lifestyle and how do I apply it to the landscape? Sounds kind of weird, huh? But think about this. Say, for instance, your wants and needs, the functions of your landscape from question number two is, well, I want a vegetable garden, I want a water feature, I want to have a misting system, I want to have a nice lawn for the kids, I need a play area, and I'd love shady trees, and I'd love flowering perennials, and I'd really like to plant all my annuals. Okay, but you're a business owner somewhere, and you're pulling down 70 hours a week minimum getting that sucker off the ground. Do you have or will you have the time to put in to something that might be way up there on the maintenance scale and you only have this much time to do it? Yeah, you could go hire somebody, but that's not what this is about. It's about doing it yourself, taking care of it yourself and saving all the money you possibly can. So what's my lifestyle and how does it apply to that landscape project that you're thinking about? All right, number four. What experience do I have in projects like this? What projects have you taken on along the sliding scale of one to 10? One, you've maybe planted a pot of pansies. And 10, why the hell are you watching me? You know what to do. So somewhere on there. And what do you need to do to improve to have the confidence to take a project on like this? All right, number five is, and this is an important one, and you'll see why, is what help can you garner to help lighten the load of this project? What help in your circle of influence? This is very, very important when it comes to taking something on that's a little bigger. It's gonna stretch you just a little bit mentally and physically. The more help you have at your disposal, the better. Yeah, you and your significant will be the original team. You'll be the dynamic duo when it comes to this project. But maybe on demolition day, if demolition day is a needed task, you just might want to have five, six, ten people. And if you can get it, sure does lighten the load. So how many can you find? Okay, number six is what tools do you have and what tools might you need to attain, both permanently and temporarily? Tools, both hand tools, power tools, mega power tools. Seven. Lucky number seven, and you're gonna know why when I say this. Lucky number seven is what budget, what realistic budget are you gonna set for this project? Now, all the other things that we're talking about is gonna to come to bear on the answering number seven, but it should kind of be the other way around because I don't want anybody eating pork and beans. And I used to always say this at the table. I don't want anybody to have pork and beans you know, for dinner for the next five years, but you have a beautiful landscape. We shouldn't have to live like that, right? So a realistic budget that you can attain through whatever resources that you have and apply it to this and get as much bang for your buck. This is where DIY ship really comes into play. Okay, number eight, which kind of goes along with number seven is what are my wants and needs and how does that fit into my budget? Do you have a champagne taste and a water budget? Or is it the other way around? You got a whole lot of resources and you're 
plans aren't that complicated. You more than more than willing to float that project just in what you have in your bank account. Number nine is what time frame are you hoping to achieve this? Start, finish, season, and speed at which you want to do it. Is this something where a hey, time is not of the essence? I can knock this out over the course of many, many weekends. Or is this something that, you know, the missus and I got a big ass vacation to Hawaii come uh, October, and here it is, May. I got to get this thing done. I got to get it done and get it done in a timely manner. That's the answer to question number nine. Okay, number 10 is the ideas that I have just my own, or have I shared any of this? and is everybody on board? Answer that question and you will be 50% of the way home to getting that project off the ground smoothly and without any of this going on inside the house, okay? So is everybody on board or just you? Okay, number 11, based on the functions of the new landscape, are my wants and needs gonna fit into that? So maybe you want low maintenance but you want to build yourself 11 by 16 pond with a nice waterfall and koi fish and turtles and other stuff, okay? Just a little different. So does your form and function of the new landscape fit with the wants and needs of what you're talking about? Now, maybe you need very, very good drainage because of the way your landscape is uh, arranged. You need to get water out of there because you know that there's ponding and other stuff going on when the rains come, heavy rains. But you're also thinking about a dry creek bed. You know, you always like the looks of the landscape of the dry creek bed. Well, you can do both. You can do both. Check out the ebook and the digital course that I have, and we talk about how to incorporate dry creek beds into a great drainage system. Okay, number 12. Number 12 is also a big one, is in all reality, how long are you going to be at the house you're in right now where you're considering this landscape project? How long? Is it going to be one year and the company is moving you on? Or maybe you're in the military and you're getting promoted and you're going to Okinawa, whatever. How long are you going to be at this house? Because this will determine exactly how much fancy and fluff and gooch you really should be throwing into the landscape. If it's only three years, function over fanciness is going to take precedent. If this is your forever house, you're going to raise the kids here. You're going to celebrate your 25th anniversary. You're going to grow old and gray in this house, a much different approach. Also keep in mind that the needs that you have now, as I'm talking to you today, will be much different than 20 years or 25 years down the road. Maybe you don't want to take care of stuff that much when you're older. Maybe you want to travel like Maestro and I. Maybe you don't want to have that high maintenance going on. Maybe you're going to sell the house and downsize and move to something else. So as you're considering this landscape project, bear in mind how long you plan on being there. Okay, and finally, lucky number 13. Where are you at as far as your desire of landscape maintenance? Is it something that you're, uh, you're a one? <laughs> I'm farming that crap out every week to somebody come in and mow and blow this place and do a little extras once in a while? Or are you somewhere in the middle where, hey, I like keeping my own lawn. I like making sure that the, the sprinklers are, are edged out and everything is working properly. I love seeing spring come on and all the perennials and annuals that I put in. I enjoy doing that. Or are you a 10? You're a 10 and your landscape is your love. It's your, it's your second love and you love being out there every single day, nipping and tucking and doing and planting and removing and you know what I mean. You're just a, an avid, avid gardener. Decide where you're at. Once again, where you're at today is gonna to be different than many years down the road. Okay, there you go. 13 things that you can answer on your own let your significant answer them on their own, and then sit down and compare. I really suggest you do a date night or something. Go out with your answers and sit down over a glass of wine or your favorite beverage and a meal and talk about it. Talk about it constructively. When couples tend to talk about big projects, whether it be a kitchen remodel, a brand new home, uh, a landscape project, whatever, 
there's often differences and differences are okay because many times those other person's ideas you never thought about because you're only thinking it with your own head, okay? Now that you've kind of come to some congruency over those 13 questions, here's the next step for a successful landscape project, and that is your heart. That's right, the thumper in your chest. And I mean that in a couple of ways. I mean that number one, making sure that you're in good health before you take something like this on. If you have any sort of physical limitations or you have possible health issues, man, go see the doc and make sure, put, the, put yourself on a, a little weight loss program, more and above what a landscape project will do for you, and make sure you're in good health. But here's the other part about the heart part, and that is you have to know in your heart you're capable. You have the fortitude, dedication, and commitment to start this, take it on the mental part, doing the physical part, and finishing it, and looking back on it, and went, yep, I did that. I did that, and I did it the right way the first time, and it stayed in my budget. Some people can do this. Not everybody. Many people can, and they don't know it. So, when it comes to your heart, are you capable of taking something like this on? You know, over the years, I have, uh, I have been called to the homes of many DIYers that started their own landscape project. They didn't answer those types of questions. They didn't have a budget. They didn't even have so much as a design. But they had drive and they had desire and they had fortitude and commitment until they didn't have the mental side come into it. The physical side, they got that in spades. But they would run into these, these walls, these mental walls, and they would call. And that's where I would come in and consult. Now, many times, I could take those Humpty Dumpties and I could put them back on the wall with a one or two hour conversation. Sometimes they would just look at me and go, Coach Matt, just please do it. Otherwise, we're going to get divorced or whatever. You know, and I share a very funny story about that on uh, uh, one consultation. Literally almost ended up in divorce court. But hey, you know, that's life. We got to know our limitations. If you want to talk about dedication and commitment, check out this video right here. I did many, many months ago. It's oftentimes where I gain my inspiration and how I became dedicated and committed that when I started that project, I saw it through more than just being a professional contractor. But, you know, I'm human too, and I've got to have that drive and desire. When I know it's going to be 105 degrees that day, got to get it done. You know, and that, sometimes that took some fortitude. It really did. So if you haven't picked up on it, and any time that you've watched my channel, I really super stress the planning and designing and budgeting for a landscape project. Look at it this way. Taking on a landscape project is like redoing the kitchen, putting on a new addition redoing the roof, reformulating the whole garage interior. It's a big project. And the way people do things better is by getting educated. It really is. Take your vocation, for instance. Your vocation came along with education, training, experience on the job, etc. And you are a master of your craft, I'm sure, by now. Well, that's what I used to do. I was a master of my craft, even though it was in landscape design and construction. But, you know, I got educated many years ago. I had a lot, thousands of hours of OJT. This is what I want for you. All right, let's wrap this up. Here you go. This is a, a key beyond all the questionnaire that I already threw at you in order for you to be successful and enjoy and be rewarded at the end with a good landscape project. Number one, congruency. Number two, stick to a budget. Number three, the function of the landscape, your capabilities, your wants and your needs, your likes and your dislikes, very important. It's okay to have what you like. But make sure that you don't have things that you don't like. And make sure that congruency between the two of you, the likes and dislikes are solid. Your lifestyle and your short and long-term goals for the place that you're living in. I think that would get you off to a very, very good start. Now, you might want to check in next week because I'm going to talk about how I can take you from whatever you do 
and turn you into an amateur landscape designer. We're going we're gonna to go back to the table and I'm going to show you how to do some things at the design table. If you guys get stuck, I'm only an email away, youryardcoach at gmail.com. Ask away. Also, check out the website for that free 15 step. Another in your hand for free little tool that'll get you off on the right track. There's always the ebook in Homescape 1.0, the digital course. Hey, as always, to your landscape success, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and make sure if you got somebody in your circle of influence that maybe is going down this landscape project journey, you might want to share this video with them. And I'd appreciate it very much. Bye for now. I'll see you next week.